Hello, good evening and farewell to our final Sunday and our final weekend here in the Costa Calada. Uh, welcome to another episode of Brett's All Time Radio Show. Thanks for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at our summer home just for two more days. I can't believe that it's come to an end and it feels like it's just flown by. We'll be back at beautiful East Devon on Tuesday and I can honestly say there's no place like home. Don't forget I've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. I'd really appreciate it if you check them out and our supporter page where you can just show us a little bit of love is a patreon.com forward slash Brett's old time radio show. Time now for our latest adventure with The Saint and it's an episode called The Carnival. The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Step a little closer, if you will, my friend. You might be the start of a mighty insurgent throng. You mean me? You and none other. Slumming the night, friend? Oh, I just happen to like carnivals. The gentleman says he likes carnivals. Eh? And now let us all step up a little closer here while we talk about the greatest attraction on the mighty Midway. A test of strength, courage, and endurance attracting attention all over the civilized world and further. Texas. <laughs> It's a joke, friend. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I am talking about that little lady inside the tent here that all your friends have told you positively not to miss. The courageous girl who lies buried alive 20 feet below the surface of the earth. Are you going in, friend, or am I wasting my time? I'm still on the fence. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Huh? Well, you have heard her name, you have read about her in the papers, and now you are going to see Mona, the buried alive girl, who has lain in her grave on these premises for 222 hours, 36 minutes, and 21 seconds. And is now attempting to break the world record of 244 hours. Ooh, how strenuous. Inside the tent, you will see her, talk to her, ask her any questions that happen to be on your mind. Tell me more. My friend, I don't request that you buy a ticket for this great attraction. I just ask that you put this question to yourself. Yes? Would I have the courage to change places with Mona, the buried alive girl? No. I thank you for your kind attention, and the box office is now open. Oh, uh, one, please. One, he says. Oh, the... hmm. Some days it don't pay to get buried alive. Hey, uh, son, the entrance is right in front of you. My change? Get you... Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, the change. That's right. It's a <laughs> mere oversight, sir, I assure you. <laughs> Here you are, right straight ahead. Oh, thank you, thank you. To communicate with Mona, talk down too. Well, all right, I talk. Mona! Frankie, you gotta get me out of here. I'm going crazy down here. I'm scared. Mona, this is. I've been thinking, Frankie. I've been thinking all day what Angie said just before she. I don't want to end up like Angie, Frank. I don't. And I will if you don't get me out of here. I know I will. I don't want to die, Frankie. Get me up. Mona, this isn't Frankie. This is Simon Templer. Can I help you? Oh, you're not. You're not Frankie? No, but I'll help you if you'll tell me what you're afraid of. Mona? I am in very good health and am enjoying no physical discomfort whatsoever. I am looking forward eagerly toward breaking the world's record for being buried alive. 244 hours. Pictures of me are available at the box office at nominal cost. Mona, what are you afraid of? I am in very good health and am enjoying no physical discomfort whatsoever. I am looking forward eagerly to... I know, I know, I heard. Hi. What are you doing here? Who are you? I'm Simon Templer, a customer. Who are you? 
customer, all right. Excuse me, I, I thought I... Excuse me. Oh, say, aren't you the strong man? I saw your act a few minutes ago. Segundo, huh? That's pretty good. Huh? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Tell me, Segundo, what about Mona? Who was Angie? Angie? Excuse me, I gotta go. Excuse hey, me. Hey, wait a minute. Excuse me. I think you got two for the price of one, eh, friend? Mona and the strong man, Segundo. I caught his act before. Quite a large hunk of muscle. I wouldn't like him to step down on my foot. Yeah, the guy is built like a Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Only trouble is uh, his motor don't run so good. <laughs> oh, a few chips light in the head. Huh? A whole stack. <laughs> well, did you enjoy your chat with Mona? Tell me, who was Angie? Angie, oh, yeah, that Angie, that's a real sweetheart. That was Mona's sister. And she used to do the buried alive act before she died. Oh, a real down. Was it an accident? Accident? No, no, it was a... A weak heart, that Angie. Oh, she was all heart. Oh, we miss her. How'd you know about her? Tell me about Mona. Why? I might like to help her, that's all. Hey, look, my friend, nobody in this county needs no help from you. We take care of each other. We always have and we always will. Nobody on the outside cares nothing about us, and we don't care nothing about them. Now, beat it. Who's the owner of this carnival? Be St. Clair, and a trail is right down the midway, and she'll tell you the same thing I did. I'm hard to discourage. Friend... There's nobody here needs no help. Friend, you forget that I've heard your jokes. See you later. Come in. Uh, Miss St. Clair? Right. Who are you? I'm a customer of your carnival. Well, come in, customer. Sit down. Oh. Thank you, thank you. I wanted to ask a few questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> Where's your question license? My name is Simon Templer, also known as the Saint. These are for my own opinion. <laughs> what do you want to know? I'm interested in Angie. Oh, Angie? Mm-hmm. They never come any better. Every hundred years or so, you meet somebody nice in this louse trap circuit. And Angie was one of them. Now she's gone and the crumbs remain. Anything peculiar about the way she died? Sudden, that's all. Heart. Why? And her sister, Mona, took her place. Yep. Mona's a good kid, but a kid. Any chance of her being brought up from the living grave soon? Why? I got the impression she didn't like it down there. No, you did. You know something? I don't like running this flea circus of a carnival either. Some mornings I don't even like living. But I don't come running to you about it, Mr. Templer. You won't bring her up then, huh? No. I got nothing to say about it anyway. It's up to her husband, Frankie Fowler. You catch his act? Frankie, the tattooed boy? I'm afraid I'm not an art lover. <laughs> well, he's no Mona Lisa, Jack. Any more questions? Would I get any more answers? No. But when a woman says no, that's not always what she means. Jack, that's an entirely different type of question. Hello. Anybody here? Yeah? Frankie, I'd uh, like to talk to you. Who are you? My name is Simon Templer, Frankie. What do you want? Well, I've always been interested in tattoos. I, I think they're fascinating. Oh? Huh? Mm, almost as fascinating as the people who do them. Oh, a fan. Come in, come in. Thank you, thank you. You know, the, uh, the Connie's closed for the night, but I'm always glad to oblige a customer. Well, I'm not exactly a customer. I'm a friend of Mona's. Mona's got no friend, Simon Templer. Well, let's say a speaking acquaintance. Did you know Angie, Frankie? Know her. Angie was my wife. Wonderful girl. Almost killed me when she passed away. Omaha. She's buried there? I couldn't leave her behind. Not with strangers. Call me sentimental if you want to, but that's the way I felt. You see that urn over there on the table? Now Angie's with me always. I, am. Uh... I see. They say us carny people got no heart. Hey, you like to see some real artistic work in tattoo, Mr. Temple? Oh, maybe some other time, Frank. Look at that. Look at that. Here. Monitor in the Merrimack. Civil War. Authentic, 100%. Hmm. Eh, they don't do work like that anymore. Frankie, I, uh... Everything I got on me is art. Art! I seen a guy the other day ask him what he had on. He said, surrealism. Surrealism. I told him right out. I said, the guy that tattooed that on you ain't American. That's what I told him, and I'll stand by it. <laughs> Surrealism. Frankie, I've been talking to Mona. What about? 
She's buried too far under the earth, Frankie. She wants to come up. Well, she does, does she? She say anything else, did she? I just got the impression she was frightened down there. That's well, all. let her be. Let her stay there. She's getting just like Angie. Oh? Angie was frightened? Well, no, no, that's not what I meant. Angie, Angie was the greatest. It's just that they're sisters, see? What's this to you? Nothing, except I think it might be better if you brought Mona up. Oh, you do. You do. Segundo! Uh, Frankie. Come in here. Now you see what happens to guys who get nosy. Afraid to do your own strong arm work, eh, Frankie? Why, you... Here I am. <laughs> Look, Segundo, this guy came in here saying bad things about Angie. About Angie? Yeah. You shouldn't have said that, mister. Not about Angie. I don't like nobody to say bad things about Angie. I'm trying to help her, Segundo. And Mona. Don't listen to him, Segundo. Get him. I don't trust... Hit him again, Segundo. Throw him out. Yeah. You shouldn't have said bad things about... Wake up. Uh, Hey, carnival's closed for the night, friend. uh, Why don't you go home and sleep? Oh, wait till I find my head. What happened? Well, uh, let's say too much cotton candy and circus peanuts, huh? Drink help you out? Ooh, immeasurably. Lead the way. (laughs) Yeah, don't mind drinking with a dwarf, do you? Uh Uh-huh. Why should I? Well, some people do. (laughs) Oh, mm, my name's Carlos. Oh, hello. Uh, I'm Simon Temper. Yeah. Oh, right in here. Oh. My home. Uh, one of the wagons. Oh, don't, don't bump your head. Oh, I'll watch it. <laughs> here. Pour this down. Oh, thank you, my friend. Oh, my, I needed that. Have to go, or can you stay and talk a while? Oh, I'd like to stay if I may, Carlos. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I very seldom get the chance to talk, Mr. Templer. Why is that? Eh, well, it's always rather a lonely occupation. Not freak enough to make much money in the carnival, and too much of a freak to be accepted out of it. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry to burden you with my troubles. Everyone's troubles are everyone else's, Carlos. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Want to tell me about yours? Well, I had a a call for help tonight from 20 feet under the ground. And I I just don't know what to do about it. Mona? Yeah. She said she was afraid she would end up like Angie. She wanted to come up. Not or nothing at all since Angie died of natural causes. That's what they all said. Did you uh, tell anyone else about this? Not directly, no. Frankie refused to let her come up. We got into it. Don't throw you out. An understatement, Carlos. I have another drink. Oh. Yeah. Mona never talked like this before. She was never scared, not like Angie. Mona's got guts. It worries me. Go here. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, what about the man who was married to both of them? Huh? Frankie. Simon. If you were born a freak like I was, you had no choice and you can be philosophical. But if you make yourself a freak like Frankie did, you got to hate yourself and everybody else as long as you live. And yet two women married. Don't rub it in. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have jumped you. I'm not always as philosophical as I try to be. I can't help thinking of Mona, buried alive, afraid. Afraid of what? And she mentioned that Angie said something to her just before she died. What? She didn't say. Tell me, uh, how far are we from where Mona is? Just across the midway. You want to go over there? I'd feel better. And so would I. Let's go. Hmm. What about B. St. Clair? Carlos, uh, can you figure her out? Well, not quite, because I don't think B can figure herself out. She hasn't had much fun either. I hope she gets some. Uh, this is Mona's tent, isn't it? Anybody around? Mm, mm, not a soul. Let's go in. <whistles> Mona! 
Morning. Mona. Huh. She must be asleep. Well, let me try. Mona. Can you hear me? Mona. She's not asleep. There's something wrong. Mona. Mona, it's Carlos. Mona. What was it she said? She might wind up like Angie. Mona. Carlos, go get every man you can and every shovel and then get a doctor and an ambulance. Yeah. He wanted to break the record. Well, maybe she will. Maybe she will. Like Angie. That's it. Keep going. Stop. Get out of the way. Move. Move. Go. 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 It's faster when I told myself. Okay, okay. Are they almost down to her, B? Well, I think so. It's only about eight feet. We advertised 20, but eight is enough. What do you think happened, Carlos? I don't know. What happened to Angie? A heart attack. You know that. Do I? She just fainted, maybe. Maybe this is all about nothing. I doubt it, Frankie. And so do you. What do you have to come nosing in for, Templer? B and I don't need you. We can get along. B of... and you? All of us. That's what I mean. You mean you'd rather have left it down there? I'm not taking this from you. I... Frankie! Frankie! I got the bottle. Oh, come on. Come on, you guys. Grab it. Grab it. Come on. Come on. Uh, 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 come on. 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 You better come over here, Doctor. Right, Mr. Templer. Yeah. There. What is it, Doc? Is she... Is she... Well, she's still breathing, but that's about all. Any symptoms? Well, if I had to make a guess, symptoms of poisoning. Get her over to the ambulance. All right, come, come on. on. Mr. Templer. <laughs> Mr. Templer, I'm sorry I didn't get her up sooner. I should have made it plainer, but I didn't know who to trust. Well, do you now? Just who not to trust. And who's that? Everyone. <laughs> How is she this morning, Doctor? Oh, she's a sick girl, but she'll live. We got her in time. Oh, I'm glad. What caused it? Poison of some kind, definitely. I'm waiting for a lab report. Uh, may I see her? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Templer. She's rational now. Kept asking Angie to forgive her before... Forgive her for what? Well, she didn't say. They usually don't. Don't stay too long. Oh, all right, Doctor. Good morning, Mona. Who are you? Simon Templer, I spoke to you down the tube yesterday. You thought at first I was Frankie. I don't remember. Don't you? You said you were afraid you might end up like Angie. She said something to you before she died, Mona. What was it? I don't remember. She didn't say anything. You uh, know what happened to you last night, Mona? No. There was poison in your food that was lowered through the tube. Got any idea who did it? Poison? I don't believe it. Well... Police will find out. I don't want the police. I I, I did it. I I took it myself. What kind? I I don't remember, but I took it. Why did you want Angie to forgive you, Mona? Who told you that? I mean, you're making that up. I'm trying to help you, Mona. I don't need help. I want Frankie. I want him back. I I want him back. All right, all right. I'll find him for you. Come in. How are you, B? How's Mona, Simon? Better, Carlos. I was at the hospital all day. Had to wait for the lab reports on the poison. Who did it? Oh, it could have been put there by anyone. To the police now? Not yet. Mona claims she took it herself. She's obviously protecting someone, or is afraid of someone. But who? B, you don't have to answer unless you want to. What, Simon? Has there been anything between you and Frankie? Well, everybody gets lonely. Are you still lonely? Jack, I got no ambition to travel around the country and earn. That answer it? That's good enough. If I can wind this thing up tonight, will the two of you help me? You especially, Carlos. Anything I can, Simon. All right. You're not closing the carnival down tonight, B. We'll stay open if you say so. Well, it might make it easier. Carlos, you go to Frankie's trailer while he's doing his show and take the urn. Would you mind doing that? I'll do it. Good. Put it in a safe place. It doesn't matter where. And come back to the trailer. All three of us will wait for Frankie to come back after his show. What happens then? I don't know for sure, but I have a theory. I hope it's right. It's a question. What happens if it's not right? B, that's an entirely different type of question.
Simon, why do we have to wait in the dark for Frankie? It's creepy in here. He might not come in if he saw the lights, be. Do you mind, Carlos? Not a bit. The dark is a friend of mine. Oh, I'm getting chumpy. You can leave if you want to. I might be able to handle what I have to do alone. Oh, I'll stick. But give me a chance to gripe, will you? <laughs> How about you, Carlos? Oh, I'm enjoying it, Mr. Templer. Gives me a chance to feel important. I don't get many chances like that. Gee, Frankie's late. He should have been here by now. Well, maybe business was good tonight. Well, he usually is. Oh? Say, B, I uh, don't want to be personal, but running a carnival, is it uh, lucrative? Uh, Jack, I don't want to brag, but I am loaded. Oh, how nice for you. Why, last year alone, I... Someone come. Oh. Good evening, Frankie. Templar. What is this, B? I couldn't keep away, Frankie, but I brought my chaperone. Well, get him out of here. Some chaperones. The saint and a dwarf. I didn't choose to be a freak, Frankie. That's the difference. What's going on? Look around, Frankie. Anything missing? What do you mean? <clears throat> the urn. Where is it? What'd you do with it? We took it. You took it? Segundo, come in here. I don't think you'll need Segundo this time. No? Sit down, Frankie. <laughs> If you don't like that seat, I can get you a hotter one. You think you know something? I'm nosy, Frankie. Very nosy, as you pointed out. What is it, Frankie? This guy Templar again, Segundo. He's been saying bad things and doing bad things. He took Angie's arm. Easy, Segundo. You'll want to hear this, too. Hear what? Don't wait, Segundo. He's just stalling. Go get it. You took the arm. Segundo, sit down. No. Segundo, wait in here. Wait in here. Okay, Carlos. I trust you. Good. It's about Angie, Segundo. This morning and last night, Mona was calling out for Angie to forgive her. For what? Because she'd been going around with you, Frankie, while you were married to her older sister. I loved Angie. And how long after she died did you marry Mona? Six weeks. I couldn't help it if the kid was crazy about me. But you couldn't help it when you killed Angie with poison. Who says I did? Where's the evidence? You thought there wasn't any. It was almost a smart job, Frankie, but you couldn't pull anything all the way smart. It was only half smart, and that can be fatal. If you think I'm going to stand here and listen to this You'll stuff, stand you... and you'll listen. Murderers hardly ever change tactics, Frankie. The poison showed up in Mona's stomach. We couldn't prove that on you, but there are certain poisons that can be traced even after cremation. The kind you used is one. Now, do you begin to get the point? It's not true. You can't trace it, can you, Carlos? Yes, you can. I should have remembered. I should have had that urn analyzed long ago. Now, wait a minute. You're guessing at this. Are we? Where's the urn? You're guessing at a motive. I didn't kill Angie. Then why would I want to kill Mona? Bigger stakes. You were after B. She was, uh, loaded. It's all a lie. I, I mean, B and I... Segundo, stay away from me. Put that gun away, Frankie. No. I'll use it if you don't stay back, Segundo. Frankie... You killed Angie? I tell you, nobody killed her. She, she, she had a weak heart. That was it, a weak heart. Segundo, listen to me. You kill Angie, Frankie. Stay back. Stay back. He's going to shoot Segundo. She, she never done no harm. She, she was so... Stay so... back, I'm warning you. She loved you and you gave her poison. Don't come no closer, I mean it. Stay back. <laughs> She laughed sometime, and she did like a little girl. Keep away from me, you big creep. Well, you couldn't let her live. You crazy creep. Why don't you drop? You ain't human. Keep your hands off of me. Let go of him. Let go of him. Let go. It's me. Carlos, let him go. Let him go. Sure, Carlos, sure. Secundo, are you hurt? (sighs) Bad? No. No. I think one was a clean miss. The other two got him in the shoulder. Maybe he'll live. Here, let me help you, Officer Gundo. Come on now. Sit down, sit down. B, get a doctor. All right, all right, Father. Quite a man, this Segundo. Not so strong upstairs, but in the heart, plenty. Yeah, he almost killed Frankie. I'm almost sorry he didn't. Frankie doesn't deserve to live. Someone else will decide that, Carlos. What Segundo did? I wish I could have done it, Saint. In my hands, I wish I could have done it. Carlos. I never told anybody, Saint. I never told her. She never guessed. But I loved Angie, too. Heaven help me. I loved her, too. Just step a little closer. 
closer, if you will, my friend. You mean me? I mean you. Uh, if you care to see the fat lady, friend? Weight 9,324 ounces. <laughs> well, that's better. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Templer? <laughs> I'm fine. Tell me, uh, how's Mona? Oh, she's all right. It's a funny thing, Mr. Templer. I, I think Angie must have told her when she was dying that she suspected Frankie. But Mona could never bring herself to believe it. She still can't. But I guess she will. See, uh, going in to see the fat lady, Mr. Templer? You talked me right into it. Here's a five. Thank you, and the interest is straight ahead, friend. Uh, my change? <laughs> change. <laughs> Here's your five back. For Simon Templer, everything is always on the house. On the house? Yeah. Well, thanks. Say, you'd make a wonderful bartender. Oh, now, Mr. Templer, that wouldn't be refined. Oh, well, just a lovely dream, a wild, lovely dream. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, your life is your own. It's yours to guard when danger is near. And danger is never absent from the highways of America, where some 30,000 persons are killed every year. Only you can take the responsibility for averting the most tragic of all traffic accidents, the accident that happens to you. You can take that responsibility by recognizing the dangers of the road and by obeying the laws that have been made to protect your life. In almost every single motor accident reported by the National Safety Council, there was at least one violation of traffic regulations. The most common violation was speed. Speed too great for safety. Speed to save a few seconds. Speed that spelled out death and tragedy on the road. And, as always, the National Safety Council warns about driving after drinking. It's not an empty warning because fully one quarter of all fatal accidents involve drivers or pedestrians who have been drinking. This is a fact. So when you drive, remember that an accident can happen to you. Learn and obey the traffic laws and don't take the little chances that so frequently result in a smash-up. The care you take may save a life and that life may be your own. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. This adventure of the saint was written by Dick Powell. In our cast, you heard Mary Shipp as Mona and Sheldon Leonard as the Barker. Bob Jellison was Carlos, Ed Max Segundo. Henny Bacchus played B, Harry Bartell was Frankie, Harry Brown was the Doctor. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Fathier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Today, Theater Guild on the Air presents the dramatic story, Come Back, Little Sheba, starring Gary Cooper and Shirley Booth. Sunday also means another 90 wonderful minutes with the big show. And among this Sunday's stars are Jimmy Durante, Fred Allen, Judy Holliday, and many, many more. And, of course, Tallulah will be the MC. And for a sparkling article about the glamorous Tallulah, see the latest issue of Look Magazine, now on sale. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with The Saint. Don't forget, it's comedy tomorrow with, uh, well, it's our final day in Spain tomorrow. We're going to be flying back home on Tuesday morning. So, it, do you know what? It's been brilliant over here, but it will be nice to get back and just sort of get back into the swing of things. That will be fun. As I mentioned, bit of comedy for tomorrow night. It's Tony Hancock, Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes and Kenneth Williams. In Hancock's half hour, that's going to be going live from 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at touradate.co.uk and you could support us at patreon.com forward slash brett's old time radio show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on brett's old time radio show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>